Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Galecki and welcome to the 382nd Imagine Buffalo program and now our fourth virtual Imagine lecture hosted by the downtown Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Thank you so much for joining us today. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. We're going to start with our speaker shortly, but first, a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted during our speaker's presentation, which will last about 15 minutes. We'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. If you have a question, please type it into the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. This program is being recorded. You'll be able to watch it again later on the library's Facebook and the library's YouTube channel pages. As a reminder, we'll be here on Zoom every Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. with a great lineup of local speakers. Now, today's featured speaker is a friend, neighbor, and uh, a great Buffalonian, John McClive. John is a native of Buffalo, New York, and a graduate of Lafayette High School and the University of Buffalo. He has a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and is a licensed professional engineer in New York State. He joined Buffalo Forge Company in 1958 and was in sales from 1960 to 63 when he became the leader of the team that redesigned air conditioning equipment. From 1966 uh, through 1972, he was product manager of air conditioning products. After that, he was promoted to manager of marketing services for the corporation, serving in that capacity until retirement in 1991. John was active in the Niagara chapter of the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers becoming president of their 50th anniversary meeting in 1969. He was also active in the Erie Niagara chapter of the National Society of Professional Engineers, serving as president in 1974. John is an active uh, Westminster Presbyterian Church uh, and serves as church historian. He has produced a PowerPoint of stained glass windows and given many presentations to the public since 1978. He is also an active, he is also active with the Rotary Club of Buffalo and serves on the advisory board of the Salvation Army. Now, let's welcome John McClive. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> I'd like to um, start out by saying this PowerPoint is, uh, the type in this PowerPoint is large enough that you can read it quite easily. So I'm not going to read it because you can see uh, faster than I can read, but I will just hit the highlights. Now at this point, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop the, my video so I don't distract you. The PowerPoint uh, presents a history of air conditioning as it evolved at the Buffalo Forge Company. It's in four parts. Uh, from 1878 until 1902, the engineers of Buffalo Forge Company made many, did many things to promote good ventilation and heating and even uh, some little bit of cooling during that period before Willis Carrier became their chief engineer. Carrier was chief engineer from 1902 to 1915 when he started his own company uh, with the uh, uh, amicably with uh, agreement with the Buffalo Ford Company. He developed air conditioning, no question, utilizing mechanical refrigeration. Then in the 1920s, this is the third part, the public became aware of air conditioning 
as it was used to keep movie theaters 20 degrees cooler on outside on uh, summer days. And finally, after the development of the aerofin coil in the 1930s, Buffalo uh, pioneered the use of air conditioning cabinets. Our next slide shows Buffalo. Um, in 1900, the photograph shows the electric streetcars on Main Street, but let's be reminded that this was a, a very smoky atmosphere uh, right up until um, that time. Coal was the primary fuel for home heating and trains. And you can remember how difficult that made breathing at the time. Horse-drawn carriages, uh, there was a lot of dust around and the famous belt line uh, rail loop around the city was a principal source of transportation. Early Buffalo Ford fans provided needed ventilation in industrial buildings at the time, a great innovation. Next slide. Shows the formation of Buffalo Forge Company in 1878, when William Wendt, who really was a visionary, uh, had a great business sense and um, a very skilled in marketing. And he uh, bought half interest in the company called Buffalo Forge Company. It was started a year earlier by Charles Hamilton. In 1883, he bought out Hamilton and made his brother Henry vice president for manufacturing. As uh, they then started a uh, program to build fans industrial uh, heating systems. And in 26 years, that plant uh, would grow to the 14 acre plant at 490 Broadway, you see on the left. That uh, facility today is known as the Forge and uh, is um, quality apartments. On the lower side, you'll see a link to a website telling the story of Margaret Wendt, uh, William Wendt's daughter, a community activist who gave her fortune to start a foundation that bears her name, the Margaret Wendt Foundation. Next slide. This was the Buffalo Forge. And it really was efficient. Um, it made obsolete the more conventional uh, blacksmith blowers, bellows. But not only that, but the tiny fan, and you can see in the pictures on the, on the right how small that fan was. That fan inspired uh, Wendt to manufacture larger fans that were needed to produce ventilation at the time. Another feature of the portable Ford meant, and this meant a great deal in the business boom of the time because it could be taken to the job site and rivets could be sent up to people working and putting the beams together. The next slide shows some of the fans and this is from the 1896 um, catalog that uh, Buffalo Forge fans now were a pretty good size. You can see the picture on the left. Um, they produced mechanical draft to replace the uh, smoke and soot from the large chimneys. And some of them were used on shipboards at the time. And um, also aboard the ships, the fan on the right, typical of the ones that were used to provide ventilation to help uh, preserve uh, fruit being shipped from the West Indies, like bananas that we were able to get every day. And I just bought a bunch of them. Uh, thanks, thanks to Buffalo Forge, we were able to get them at that time. 
So the next slide shows a great innovation as early as 1884. This was really very early. They started to put together this hot blast uh, heating system. And you can see a picture of it on the uh, upper left there, the fan and pipe coils. And pipe coils are shown down below. They're, they're made simply of pipes put up in a row. Uh, this particular, in 1886, they developed one for the George and Pierce Company that later became the manufacturer of the famed uh, Pierce Aero automobiles. Their um, 1896 catalog had multiple pages of illustrations of schools, churches, office buildings, etc., that were in use at the time. The next slide shows what I regard as a very innovative move on their part. In the 1890s, they came up with a multi-zone heating and ventilating system that Frankly, this type of design is used uh, quite often today. Uh, starting on the left, the fan is driven by a steam engine. Buffalo Forge made them very efficient steam engines. And the air uh, in the upper chamber can be uh, blown across the pipe coil to heat air, or in the lower chamber, outside air can be brought in to cool air. And you go up to the top there, you'll see the, the dampers. Um, they were, Johnson Control started in 1885, and they were used um, to then mix the air. And the photograph on the right shows uh, a typical space that was being uh, heated and cooled. Uh, depending on the sun load in the uh, winter time, Etc. Very advanced thinking. The next slide is also an amazing story in that in 1896, they were able to, this is a very rudimentary air conditioning system, but air in the uh, auditorium hotel was either heated by pipe coils or cooled by passing it over racks of ice. And it was the first, this is very, very important. It was the first practical application of combining cool air and a good start toward what became air conditioning. Next slide takes us to the uh, first days of Willis Carrier, uh, born in uh, 1876 on a farm 30 miles south of Buffalo. He, there's a plaque on the uh, upper, uh, to his memory, uh, near Angola. He was a very gifted student, went through Cornell on a full scholarship, studied electrical engineering, was interested in alternating current. Um, Buffalo Forge offered him a job and he came with Buffalo Forge instead of General Electric because he could um, do the farm chores and then um, take the train to Buffalo. And shown to the left are pipe coils. The ones were really impressed with him from the beginning and had him designing pipe coils. And he was also working on advanced programs for selecting uh, mechanical draft fans. The next slide shows the most important <laughs> invention um, that came out of Buffalo Forge and their operation in 1902, air conditioning. And if you look uh, over to the left, there's a link to the story of Willis Carrier that you can read all this. I'm just quoting from them. Now, the problem was, and, and my father was a lithographer, so I understand this, but, um, they would print in those days one color at a time and let the paper dry overnight. If it expanded or contracted, uh, the next color that was uh, laid down the next day would be out of register. And this uh, wreaked havoc with uh, 
the uh, uh, whole printing business at the time. Sackett Wilhelms hired uh, Dr. Carrier to do this. The picture on the left shows him starting the engine that uh, drove the world's first air conditioning system. And he developed a system of uh, chilled water coils going through pipe coils to maintain a constant humidity of 55% throughout the year. Now you'll notice the ammonia compressor. Ammonia was a refrigerant used at the, at the time. Um, Freon was not available until the 1930s. And I want to also point out that at no time has Buffalo Forge ever made the refrigeration compressor. Uh, Carrier didn't start to make them until the 1920s. They were available at the time of the era because of early work done uh, by air conditioning or refrigeration engineers in the 19th century. The next slide is an amazing story. Again, there's a link to it. Uh, I, I urge you to read this. It, it was a, an insight so counterintuitive that it still dazzles. And there are still people who, who have a hard time believing it. Uh, Carrier standing, you knew this has happened. Uh, he was in a train station, it was below grade. He saw, uh, it was a misty night. He saw the mist condensing on the surface. And he realized that the, if he could saturate air and control its temperature or its saturation, he could get any amount of moisture he wanted. And he um, developed what became known as dew point control. And it really was, as he said, the greatest single factor in modern air conditioning. And in fact, it made Ripley's do it or not in 1939. The next slide shows uh, a very important invention for uh, engineers. And if you uh, look to the blue um, on the left, you'll see the line going across the bottom from left to right. It's called dry bulb. And as you go up vertically, uh, that is a measure of the moisture that is in the air. Carrier measured all these uh, and put the psychometric chart together so that other engineers could use it. And if you look on the, uh, where it says reheat, there's a straight line going across showing the change in dry bulb temperature as moisture is added or taken from the air. This is a term called adiabatic. Uh, the uh, lines going from the right to left going up to saturation are were called wet bulb because they show the amount of uh, moisture that was in the air uh, as it uh, as the t uh, moisture content increased. Uh, there was a prophecy from the chief, they called the carrier the chief for the rest of his life, that comfort applications would become common. And it was a very good prophecy. Uh, next slide shows the work he did um, through 1908, where he made many inventions uh, of the air washer and um, in, invented uh, equipment that made it more efficient, like uh, uh, eliminating air uh, or, or moisture so it wouldn't uh, get into the fan. In 1908, uh, the uh, Buffalo Forge Company designed the World, world year-round air conditioning system for celluloid in uh, Newark, New Jersey. Refrigeration uh, supplied by York was 125 tons capacity. The next slide shows the uh, famous Frank Lloyd Wright building that actually used an air washer, but without refrigeration for adiabatic cooling uh, of a dry bulb in the summer when humidity was low. Uh, this didn't work very well at all on days, uh, high humidity days, but it did a good job on low humidity days in the summertime. Next slide shows a great moment in the history of this country 
when air conditioning became known to the general public for the uh, claim that come to our theater on hot summer nights we're 20 degrees cooler than the outside air and hundreds of theaters across the country installed air conditioning. Uh, Buffalo Forge, uh, the picture on the left shows Shays Buffalo installed in 1926, reopened and used to this day. And I've seen that er early air conditioning. It was a marvel. Uh, this really opened up the door for the movie industry as well as the theater industry. And the next slide shows something that was a lot of fun when uh, Buffalo Forge used cakes of ice to cool a big top. On the left, you see the uh, way it was set up, the ice on the right, the air the fan drawing it through, then blowing it up to the top of the tent. And uh, if you look over on the right, you'll see a plan view of uh, way over in the right corner of the tent. And they could fit eight of these around the tent. And the uh, and the ice lasted about as long as the uh, circus. Next slide shows a very important development in the history of Buffalo. This is the Institute of Thermal Research that I passed this morning when I went shopping. As a matter of fact, it's between the uh, Pierce Arrow plant on Elmwood Avenue, between the Pierce Arrow plant and Hurdle Avenue, uh, fairly across the street from Foundry Suites. And it was owned at the time by American Radiator Company and an engineer named Lawrence Sewell uh, worked on uh, radiators. And he did some work on an automotive radiator that led him to, to envision a more efficient heating surface. Uh, the next slide shows this surface called Aerofin. It was developed in 1923 by him and there's a picture of it in the upper right hand corner. And you can see how the uh, fin is wrapped around the pipe coil um, and then soldered. And through the center of the coil, either steam would be used for heating or chilled water for cooling. And this really opened up the air conditioning business. Um, Carrier established his own company, uh, the Carrier Engineering Company, um, and uh, that was perfectly okay with, with Buffalo Forge because they uh, were, wanted to supply products and Carrier wanted to do engineering on the job site. Um, Sewell went with Carrier and developed the Aerofin surface at uh, his uh, at, at this uh, facility in 1923. And it was marketed at the time for the fan industry. Uh, that included Carrier, Buffalo Forge, and two other manufacturers who were using air washers. That was a brilliant marketing move. Uh, the next slide shows uh, pictures of how it was used in the uh, 1930s. Air conditioning cabinets are made today, but I, <laughs> I want to show you the uh, one on the left shows a man sweating, uh, temperatures up, the humidity's up, he's sweating, but cleanliness is introduced because of washing and also they could incorporate filters. And then air motion was important because that affects your, how you feel uh, the temperature. Now, that's what I love. You can go weeks without food, days without water, but only minutes without air. People really understood the importance of air conditioning. And one of the first, uh, the next slide shows a famous Buffalo building that realized this in 1937. Uh, do many of you remember Sattler's and their famous singing jingle? And it was, it was probably one of the most successful department store in Buffalo and it was the first completely air conditioned department store. And believe me, I, I knew the Han family and they said people would flock in there because of that air conditioning. It just made everything so good. Uh, and they, it was a very successful store. Now, the last thing I wanna share with you are the sources of, this is the next slide, 
that I used for this uh, presentation. The story of Buffalo Forge Company is on the left. Um, at the 1896 catalog tells it all, but the Carrier Corporation website, you should visit that and see the story yourself. And then there's this book, Father of Air Conditioning. Uh, and I'll hold it up once I get back on. I think I'll come back on now. Uh, I'll start the video so you can see me. And I'll, start, and I'll answer any questions you might have. But I'll start out by holding up Buffalo, the birthplace of air conditioning. This is it. And uh, he has a 51 page uh, summary of the history of refrigeration and air conditioning going back to Leonardo da Vinci and ending right now. An amazing story. Janet, yes. it really is my applause to you for, for sharing that story with us. Uh, I, I'm so glad for this format because uh, you've just put together a story that I'm not sure it's been archived before, uh, but now uh, it will be a part of this Imagine program at the uh, Buffalo and Erie County Public Library site. So uh, you, you bring a lot of uh, Buffalo's history with you, John, and, and um, I, I look forward to figuring out more things you can talk about. Let me, let me ask uh, this question. Uh, we're, we're in a time with COVID-19 where air circulation is uh, of concern, not just to keep cool, but to uh, be safe. Um, uh, is, is, do you sense that uh, uh, part of the solution to this, because I hear airlines and different companies talking about how they're cleaning the air so that it's so much purer, might they be using a lot of the technology that you yourself were familiar with? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, the filter industry uh, has developed and if Austin Air and Buffalo makes high efficiency particulate air filters. Now you can see their plant off uh, I-90, I-190. Uh, they're used today in uh, office buildings and homes to uh, filter air. Uh, yes, COVID-19 has brought our attention to the importance of fresh air. And I can't say enough about it. What's so amazing is the fact that William Went had such an insight. And it was because, and I remember I talked about the belt line around Buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, transportation has always been an important part of every city. And today transportation is important. Uh, when President Trump sealed himself up in a, uh, in a SUV the other day so he could wave to his supporters, that was an example of very poor ventilation. And he could have transmitted COVID easily to the drivers and, and uh, service uh, members who were in that vehicle. Uh, COVID is bringing our attention to the importance of good ventilation. So that the, the hope might be that some filtration systems could uh, reduce the probability of, of getting uh, COVID if you're in an enclosed surface, is that the idea? Yes, and uh, that's being done now. Uh, I know of a, a woman's club in Buffalo where they are actually installing HEPA, high efficiency particulate uh, filters. Um, they are installing those in anticipation of having indoor meetings. <laughs> So and I think other organizations in the city are probably doing the same thing. It'd be an interesting study. Good. Buffalo Forge used to be one of the few companies uh, in my uh, experience in the 60s when I first got into the investment business that was locally uh, uh, managed. Uh, I forget the symbol, but I remember Buffalo Forge and then it was taken over and, and um, things, things disappeared from Broadway where it was located. Well, it was a very well-run company under Dave Newcomb, Chuck Lockhart, our uh, chief engineer, uh, 
I'm chief engineer, vice president of sales. Uh, later, George Morris had that position. George might be listening to this. Uh, we always adhered to the concept of having engineers as our sales representatives. And they could help our clients, our customers, interpret problems and select the right equipment. And it was, uh, it goes right back to the beginning of the company. Uh, 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 Vice President of Sales named Charles Arthur Booth set this up in the early 1900s that we will do it this way. And uh, we had a training program that lasted for two years. As a matter of fact, I used to teach in that training program and I taught air conditioning because that was my specialty. Um, it made the Buffalo Forge Company a leader in, uh, in the world. And that is told in the, uh, in the book, uh, History of Air Conditioning, that I referred to. John, thank you. Well, uh, Melissa, unless you have some questions, we're going to wrap this up. Anything to add? We do not have any questions. Good, good. Well, again, John, we've, uh, we've managed to archive uh, I think a, a great part of Buffalo's history. And uh, I can't thank you enough for putting this together. Uh, and with this uh, new, with the Zoom technology, uh, again, creating a visual archive, not just an audio. So folks, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we, so, <laughs> we do so appreciate this new format. Join us next week, same time, same Zoom link, uh, 1230 Tuesday when we talk to John Montague and Paul Redding uh, about the Long Shed Project at Canal Side on the Central Wharf. If you've gone down to Canal Side this summer, you saw a brand new, uh, interesting, classic looking uh, building for the location. Uh, there's going to be a major community project that uh, will be underway shortly. Uh, and we'll hear all about it next Tuesday. So I'm Dennis Galecki. Have a good afternoon and continued good health. Good day.